Have you practiced it? Um, I've played it all tournaments. All right, welcome to the final round of the Monster Apocalypse Masters tournament. This is the last match for the uh, the winner, the official Monpoc Master of this year. On our left, we have Alex, and on our right is Josh, and. Uh, Two uh, two really respectable forces. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this game and uh, give you a little little some things to chew on throughout the match and um, hopefully uh, lead you to uh, understanding uh, some of the moves a bit better. I'm uh, Steven from and Team Covenant, and to my right is Zach. Uh, yeah, they're both rocking out. Zora you notice armies. Uh, it looks like Alex lost the uh, the the role, so he chose this map and his grapple in the garden. This is the map that comes in the uh, AYB strategy guides, I understand. It's a brand new map. Um, Josh expressed that he'd never seen this map before, so he, you notice he's kind of working some things out. I'm sure there's a lot of things going through his head right now. Um, big power uh, concentration in the middle there. We have chain reaction ability zones. Um, really interesting map. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of potential for powering up here. So um, You can only imagine what Josh was thinking here, right? Um, Never seen this map before in the final game of the Masters. Got to be pretty intense. So you notice the building placement here. I remember playing Alex the uh, day before. He was using this map. He was running Sky Sentinel Army, but he used that Privateer Press building in his hand. He puts it same spot. Uh, he used it to guard his favorite building behind it, which in the previous game was his Empire State building. And I'm sure he'll use it again. The Privateer Press building is indestructible, so you can't really throw a monster through it or units and he'll use that to power up all game long. And so that's going to keep his power base safe. And uh, you notice that uh, Alex is going to be playing Zor Maxim here, um, the, the most feared, probably, of, of the monsters at this tournament. And then Josh is kind of a curveball here. He's playing the Morpher Zor Macro. So both Shadow Sun, um, both looking to take this thing home. It'll be interesting seeing all the uh, skyscrapers and Sun Industries on the board and then both manipulating the buildings. Now, of course, with a mirror match like this, with a shadow sun, it, the skyscrapers become kind of a double-edged sword. Um, on the one hand, you want them on your side so you can secure them and move the opponent's side. On the other hand, they can do the exact same thing. It'll make it tough to secure a skyscraper. So it makes it tough. What he's going to do? You notice uh, Alex puts that radar array there. Um, I don't believe Josh has one, and uh, that can give him a big range advantage later on. And that's a bank HQ being placed over there in the corner. That's going to provide some kind of firing platform um, for Josh. And unfortunately on this map, it's going to, going to help Alex out too if he wants to move there. Another skyscraper goes up. Yeah, we'll see a lot of skyscrapers in bank HQs, I'm sure. Now with again with the bank HQ, that is even a double-edged sword, even maybe even more so than the skyscraper. Um, Simply because it's with katanas being so maneuverable, you know, it's only a matter of time. But it doesn't take but one or two moves for them to get there and secure those those bank HQ and start firing. Yeah, start firing on the opponent's power base there. You'll notice how similar their buildings are. I think Josh was short a private press building, but other than that, you're pretty similar. The Empire State Building back behind the private press. It looks like Josh has chosen uh, the statue as as a more important building here than the Imperial State. Now the the beauty of the state is you get those sun drones around it and it gets a, it very, a really nasty very power producer. Usually get five or six at least on the first turn. Like I said, look at the, the similarity in the buildings. And Alex goes for both the Imperial State and the statue right next to one another there. And uh, Josh places aggressively his skyscrapers there. He's doing better as far as placement, I think. There's only one skyscraper on his side that he can secure and then move to Alex's side. He has two options once he once he makes that teleport. They that both put their network. crystal lines towards the other side of the map. Okay. Uh, Josh did play an aura refinery, which we aren't going to see on uh, Alex's side of the map. So those crystallines, I, I, I think Maxim is going to benefit probably more from those, or would hope to, just because Beatback becomes such a threat with his crystallines on the board. Here comes another Sun Industries. There's another Sun. Another Bank, Bank HQ. HQ now there. we're set. So the map is set, and uh, Let the game ready begin. For the all important first turns. The the handshake. For Gentleman shake. Now Josh is gonna gonna look at where exactly to place his Morpheus here. And I remember Morpheus can be placed 
on your side, any uh, next to any of your spawn points, and Jason, two are on any of your spawn points. So he's just playing around to see where he wants to put. It's going to give him a lot of options um, on where to put these guys, and it can uh, help in securing buildings. So that's going to be incredible. Now, when you were playing uh, Josh on day one, what what monster was he using? Josh was playing Mega Maxim. So um, he probably had the same army and buildings. Had had the same army, yeah. Um, did did very well. Um, gave me a pretty significant uh, stomping. And I'm sure that helps him to understand uh, what Alex would want to do with all his units and buildings, of course, especially yeah. since it's so similar. These guys are both basically uh, reading each other's minds here. It, what's good for one is probably good for the other as well. So it's it should be a really good matchup. It's uh, there's no secrets here. There's no no secret tech. I'm sure. I do think this new map that uh, we didn't see until this event and that building might give Alex a, a little bit of an advantage. And you know that kind of goes to show how important these maps actually are um, for your particular strategy, especially whenever um, you have armies that are more tailored to one kind of map than the other. Um, you know, losing that role, I, I was hearing a lot of people talk at the Masters, uh, is actually uh, most of the time beneficial. Um, choosing your map and playing on your map is uh, most of the time, at least in common opinion, from what I heard, a uh, more significant advantage than that first placement. You have to imagine, though, that a map that's good for Mega Zor Maxim would also be good for uh, Zor Macros. Zor Macros. Especially with all those morphers going up about the board. I'm surprised, actually, I'm surprised that Maxim would uh, would choose a map with such a big, uh, empty middle area there, because that's, that's going to limit his beatback options uh, later on. But if he does manage to catch a... Uh, Catch Macros back in the back in his power base. It's going to be a beat back fiesta. Yeah, I remember Alex, he played Sky Sentinel on this map. Very similar setup with me on day one. And uh, I lost pretty hard. He was running actually Mega Sky Sentinel. And he had a very odd strategy. I, I wasn't really ready for it. And then eventually I tried to throw him through the privateer press building, not knowing it was indestructible. <laughs> oh. And now uh, we'll see here. Um, me. We'll see here some sec uh, somewhat secret tech. Uh, not necessarily secret, but definitely worthwhile. Um, Josh is running that splash of, of saucer and uh, power pod. Very different. And um, a lot of players kind of overlook that the splashes, but that's a very, very big advantage. Can be. He takes it back here, but at least he has that option to get at least two power die on his power up, even without any buildings being secured. And uh, that can mean all the difference whenever the opponent is stomping through your power base. I'll, I'll be interested to see if Josh actually gets a chance to use that during this game. Right, right, right. And already you notice with his morpher placement, he's already got those two buildings secured. And of course, dropping that shadow gate in the middle only makes it more more difficult to disrupt. Nice. He's really stacking them up there in the middle. All right. So you said Alex played Mega Sky Sentinel first game. Right? He was rocking first, out Mega Sky round. Sentinel, yeah. So we had the the two. Um, I guess you could say champions or, or close to it of the Masters. Um, Maxim is, is of course seen in both of their arsenals and then Mega Sky Sentinel on one side and uh, Zor Macros on the other. And I really, um, I don't think anyone expected to see to see Macros here. And everyone, the Morpher at all was kind of surprising. Right, every, Ancient Asheroth had, had a bit of a, uh, a following as far as the Morpher. Um, but no one was really talking about Macros. All the attention was on Maxim. So I'll be interested to see if if Josh can compete with a with a Morpher here, and not only that, but a Morpher against Swarm Maxim. The uh, Shadow Sun units just have such synergy and such power. So I would imagine if, if it's played right, Swarm Macros could actually be really good. Oh yeah. And like you said, those those katanas. Nasty. Good defense. You know, seven move. Got the hover. Um, Five range, right? Uh, yeah, long range, high impact. Make uh, a transport just with the underground network. Just disgusting. Uh, absolutely. Uh, probably the most solid unit out of these these first three sets as far as overall uh, usability. And then they added on top of that, they have chain reaction. So That's just sick. Um, they're basically the all-in-one in uh, wonder unit.